Yeah. It's the weekend. It's the weekend. Turn it off weekend. Yeah. Over to you. <laughs> there was a story I think uh, a lot of people missed uh, yeah. this week. It, it, in the media, but I mean, not, uh, not, 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 not loud. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I saw some reactions to it. I think it was on, on the 9th of August, it was Monday, right? 9th. Uh, a, a customs vehicle, a, a customs helix ran through a crowd of people yeah. in Jibia, in Katsina State. Yeah, reckless driving, I think, over speeding. Uh, the customs said it was an accident. 10 people were killed. 10. Oh, uh, my yes, 10 people were killed. In that crowd, was uh people who were as uh, 60 years is the oldest and uh an eight year a four year old was the youngest 10 of them their families have now uh written up their names their age their gender their next of kin and the full numbers of their next of kin uh to see pay compensation the customs issued the statement i think two days ago uh to to regret the incident and say that uh, the the controller general has ordered an investigation and that was an accident, you know. But I think there needs to be an inquiry. Jibia yeah. is a border town in Katsina. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Was the custom chasing people because that becomes their their modus operandi these days. You know. But you when they still every, every day, yeah, idea. yeah, they are chasing people for bag of rice. You know. Oh, and uh, but th- this is a very tragic incident. Indeed. Ten people in one fell So the story I won't find the kind of prominence it should it should have. Uh, you know, when I saw it, I, I tried to read through it and I, I ask questions about it. And it's clear now what happened, you know, the customs, the locks vehicle ran into a crowd of people. It's very busy, you know, area in town, in Jibia. Mm-hmm. And there are 10 people died. 10 people. It's really sad. More than an investigation, there needs to be an inquiry. Who was driving this customs vehicle? What was the state of mind? What were they chasing? Why over speeding, you know, in the highly crowded Was things? he under I mean, the influence? Big, big questions. Yes, that's the first question. Was mm-hmm. he under the influence? You know, really sad. That, that story it escaped a lot of media attention but it's there yeah, it's actually it's there. there yeah yeah the guardian let's start with this uh covid 19 three states at risk as fg suggests precision lockdown uh, it's a front based story for the guardian we're talking everything covid this morning it's a main talking point sure. stay with us in the program uh, moving away from it pdp asked courts to sack booty as governor swear in parties candidates it's a front page story. Laughable. <laughs> no, no, laughable. Sad. No, no. Serious. Yeah, laughable. Because was the, sad. the PDP have seen, you know, lacuna. They've seen, they yeah, seen, yeah. They seen an opportunity to to approach the court and, and question uh, the legality of Governor Mai Malabuni, you know, as governor of Yobe State. And that's what they have done. They have still a case at the High Court. They're asking the Chief Judge of Yobe State to remove the governor and his deputy. And uh, named the PDP candidate who came second in the governorship election 2019 and his deputy as governor and deputy governor. Why? They are looking at uh, Jagede versus Akure Dulu, that Supreme Court judgment. You know, that, of course, people have said that the judgment was unclear as to the uh, position of Governor Maima Labuni holding two jobs. So they think that the, the PDP is in this case and is asking that uh, Maima Labuni, the moment he took the job as critical committee chairman for the APC, has ceased to be governor of of uh of Yobe State. So he should stay with his APC job in Abuja. And then uh the the, the, the court should now appoint the PDP candidates in that election as governor. And they've hired a the very big lawyer. They have they hired a senior advocate of Nigeria, you know, mm-hmm. as their as their lawyer in this matter. And it will proceed from in court by not in the light of day, maybe. But it's a very interesting one. Trying to use precedent. That Supreme Court judgment four to seven of uh, that's uh, four to three. You know, as 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 their basis, you know, and the, the thing about governor uh, by Malabu is that a lot of people in the state really have complained about his governance style, you know, and the PDP is also raising that Alabi never stays in Damatu, he's always always in Abuja. So argument ab- ab- among his directors are saying that he loves the APC job more than I mean, governor of of UB anyway. So if he, if he loses the so job, there's no big deal, really. Yeah. You know. So it's a matter in court, yes. And I, I think it's an interesting one, and really, really, uh, you know, set the precedent if he, if he goes on and perhaps you know see see the light of day. It's very interesting because if you have to take a look at all of the governors in Nigeria, you, I mean, Boni will probably take the cake for that governor that says being governor as a burden, so to speak. I mean, he's told, enjoying the APC political committee job. When the, when the BBC House of Service asked him in an interview with Hausa, 
uh, that your, this is what people say about you that you don't stay in your bed. You he said, I come there two times a month. Wow, that was interesting. This is still pay per view. On Did you enjoy this video? Hit the subscribe button for more, leave a comment, and like. Thank you.